Hey. Johnny here. Wow. Weird night. I got home and Shelly's away on to went to Salt Spring to his parents' place. Her parents' place and um come home and the neighbor across the street's clearing his lot, like the corner of it's like a jungle. Like probably is almost a third of an acre is covered with this bush and like scrubby fir trees and shrubs and stuff like that. And it's really kind of wet over there. It's got like a natural spring through that probably. So he's cleaning that up, but we got this chipper over there just giving it right now. Probably here in the background. Listen. Where's that? Where's that? Another tree going. Anyways. It's going oh, here you go. Small tree going. But he's been cleaning it up. I went over there a while ago. I went for a walk down to the beach actually and then then back up, then they're all over working there and then both neighbors from each corner were there. And I'm like right across the street, so I thought, well, I better go over and say hi and whatever and put my two cents in and I don't like, I don't put my two cents in though. People do what they want to do, you know, they know how to do it, give her man. But he did ask me after the one neighbor said, hey, this is Donnie Walker. He's the guy that owns the chainsaw shop up the road. And he says, oh, I just bought the chainsaw there yesterday. Just a small little still MS-170 or whatever they are, man. Those little, I don't know what they're worth. 300 bucks or something, not even that. I don't really deal with the front end with, with sales on these small, cheap things. I'm in the back dealing with my logger buddies and my um, bills for people all over the world for good work sauce. So, um... Yeah, I'm like, okay, well, so he only had a little 16 inch with it. So he cut, he, he basically was just cutting the shrubs around the property there. And then he just showed me tonight that he's got a, um, a few bigger firs right in the middle of it that are, are like only like 20 feet tall, but they're like, like 20 inch circumference on the, on the base of them, eh? So I told him, yeah, I'll come over with my saw tomorrow night and do it for free. Just cut it up in little rounds for him for his his old um, father-in-law was there looking like to take all the wood for firewood, anything he can get. A lot of people like that, eh? they just scrape out, scrape out anything. But I don't blame them because firewood's not cheap and it's hard to get these days. So um, I'll go to there, not tomorrow night because I have a family do going on. Um, one of my cousins is coming down from the interior of BC with his wife and child. I think so Friday and I told the guy if he wants me to if it's if he hasn't got it done by then I'll cut it up for him just just something to do try one of my saws out and don't need any money for it so yeah just hanging out tonight uh interesting lately um talked a lot about the new stills uh, the 462s are doing really well I'm really in love with the 462 stills. Great power, so light, handling bigger wood than expected. Um, and nothing really going wrong with it. 500s are doing well too. I see some issues already. Uh, I knew it would happen. The, the plastic is so light duty. The top covers, the back cover, you know, they're good for a while. Like, you know, let's say the one I had there that I downloaded 300 hours on it, and I can see all that stuff wore out. So in around probably the 250 hour mark, you need to replace your top cover and your back cover for the air filter, or it's not gonna stay on tight and hold the air filter on. Or the top cover moves around and shaking around like a, a shaking pizza there. So, um, it's, it's wearable parts and they're trying to make everything so lightweight that it's compromising the um, the wear factor and the um, time you get out of, of your saw, really. Like, let's hope the motors last. But if you gotta change covers, like I've seen 066 covers, 660s, 460s, 461s, last basically the lifetime of the saw, pretty much. Unless you crush it. But these ones, yeah, yeah, they're making like the plastic. It's like, it should be a couple millimeters thicker. And then it won't 
rock around with the vibration of the saw. And then there's little plastic pegs that are, are in these kind of steel rubber bushings are wearing. So now the thing's going like this as you're running it and it's wearing out everything and transferring vibration. So if it was a, f a couple of millimeters thick, at least it wouldn't do that, that wave, you know, that vibration wave and stick down in those bushings better or, or make those pegs of the bushings. I don't know why they have them into like steel like that. You know, if they had them into like a rubber composite, maybe that would wear quicker. Who knows? Maybe they got something there. But all I think is they need to like make the covers a little thicker. Like what, what's a, what's a couple grams, man, a couple grams of weight to a logger, unless you're a wimp is nothing. So at least make it so it's going to last at least a year. You know, you know, if a guy can get 250 days a year on a chainsaw and I used to judge that with, with saws years ago. I remember I always called steels 250, 250 days saws. A steel 066 will run 250 days nonstop with barely changing anything. Maybe a couple clutch springs, a clip and a washer, and hopefully you should change your spark plug and fuel filter every couple of months, which you guys don't do enough. And I've said it before, so do it, God done it. So, um, yeah, that's that's my take on that for sure, man. I remember, like, I always told that about stills there, eh? that type of that type of timing. But yeah, this new stuff right now. Yeah, I had a, a five hundred in uh, yesterday. First one I've had a problem with. Got a lot of them out there. Know a lot of friends that have them. They're all running great. This one uh, wouldn't run. Um, came in. Simon tried to start it. It would just start bleh, and die. I'm like, okay, so now we don't have a carburation. There's no carburetor on it. So there's no carburation. And so what is it? So now um, it's my first time I've had to go through like this diagnosis type thing with it. So I'm thinking, this, yeah, it can't be nothing heavy duty. The thing's too new. It didn't have a lot of time on it. I can see it, just the wear factor of the the bar plate and stuff like that. I can always tell on a saw the sprocket wear and stuff, like uh, how much time it's got on it. And so I said, you know, right away, let's check the fuel for different blockage. No, no leakage in the fuel lines when you pressure that up. Other than that, they're in the still um, service manual and, and uh, workshop manual. They don't even have a block off plate yet to block off the intake to try to uh, pressurize the motor, to see if it has a seal leaking or a gasket leaking or something. But I'm sure they'll come out with it real soon. That's quite a new model for them right now. And for us too. Or I can make something up. It's not that hard. I can put a piece of rubber between whatever and whatever the manifold and the the thing uh, where the injector um, nozzle is to into the engine. And blocking off the exhaust is simple, just with a piece of rubber. And you know, obviously pressurize it from the spark plug hole in. It makes it easier instead of making other fittings for the. Um, intake side or the exhaust side so yeah that's about it though the 500 is not so far i've had not a problem but but people um hitting them with other logs <laughs> bummer uh which happens branches fall down hit them um that's it just that one running weird so so i would say if you have some problems, is is you, if you have brake clean, I think works almost as good as electrical cleaner for for terminal spraying. So if if you unplug those and blow off around those areas where the wires are to the your modulars beside your um, right hand side where your uh, control module is and your your little wires there under your air filter, blow that off in there. Take those terminals out, spray it with brake cleaner, electrical cleaner, plug them back in, and hopefully it works for you if you do have the problem. And if you have any other problems than that, well, give me a shout. Um, I'll try to figure it out. Uh, it's pretty new to me yet. 
but I know a bit about it. I'm learning a lot these days too, like everyone else there in the world, all this new stuff. Some people are mad about it. Some people are glad about it. I believe that everyone will be glad about it soon when they get their little hiccups figured out and all their different models and saws and the stills and Husqvarna's and uh, whatever else is in there in the world, you know, like Echo and Makita, Dalmore and stuff. They, you know, they don't have any <clears throat> M-Tronic or, or um, Auto-Tune yet. Maybe because... They don't have enough of that type of emission points in the world or something. I, uh, I heard at one time it works like you have to have so much points in the world to make the emission spec. Then you can make so many smoggy ones, which seems to be stupid. But I think that's how it worked. But uh, anyways, so still in the Husky seem to be the ones that are, are leading in that. But uh, I think Still's doing a little bit better job. I think their system... <laughs> They've had hiccups too, so was Husky. But overall, these new, like the new 462 and the 500 are number one saws. If Husky doesn't come out with something quick and a bigger size and a, a bit more dependable, they're going to be hard to um, compete with, with the stills. I like them both. You, you know, I wear the I wear the the markings all the time with Husky. I wear the markings with the still. Any good saw to me that runs right is a good saw. If it fits the market and and whatnot, right? And the power power to weight ratio and stuff like that. Anyways, have a great night. The uh, chipper is stopped next door. <laughs> the buzzing action ain't happening. So, cool. I'll go for a little walk down here to the beach again while it's quiet. And uh, go back to building some chainsaws tomorrow. So, keep your saw in the woods. Stick on the ice. Montreal won tonight. Maybe they'll have a comeback. It's all uh, keeping foreign with the hockey. If you want it. Not a huge fan, but... I keep in touch with it, especially with the Canadian teams. It's been a while since we won the cup there, brother, so, yeah, why not, eh? Okay, have a good night. Bye.